Hi, everybody. It's me, Dr. Gray. I wanted to um, talk to you all a little bit about this first online experiment. Um, this first online experiment, is, it asks you to investigate the um, property, the physical property known as density, which is the mass of an object divided by the volume of an object. So density shows a ratio of your mass to volume. Um, <clears throat> So in this exercise, what you're going to do is you're going to determine the density of an unknown metal. Now, the first thing that you're going to need to do is go to this URL right here, chemcollective.org slash activities slash vlab68. Now, I'm going to share this screen showing that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, I'll recommend that you simultaneously have this PDF in this web browser open. Um, and you'll be answering all of these questions in a quiz on Canvas. Now, that quiz is not actually a quiz. That's instead your experiment. Um, so you'll be submitting everything to that experiment now, or to that quiz. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up this web browser or open up this virtual lab. And then when you navigate through the PDF that you have alongside it, it will say, um, go to the glassware. So I'm going to click glassware. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm simply going to be trying to figure out of these three different metals here, metal one, metal two, and metal three, what's the identity of them? Now, what I can do with that information, or well, I'll be determining the, the density of them, and therefore I'll be able to figure out the identity. Now, this little description here, this metals density problem tells me that from a chemical handbook available in your lab, and I'm going to annotate this. Um, yeah, I'll use that draw. Okay, so from a chemical handbook in your lab, you find that the densities of silver, rhodium, and platinum are 10.5, 12.4, and 21.45 grams per cubic centimeter or grams per milliliter, uh, respectively. Perform your experience using this virtual lab. So we're gonna use this virtual lab to identify which of these different um, samples, metal one, two, and three, which one of the silver, rhodium, and platinum. Okay, so the first thing, look for glassware. And what you're going to do with that glassware is you're then going to select beakers. Once you're in the beakers section, you're going to click on 250, a 600, and a 1000 milliliter beaker. Okay, so these are all different. But one thing that I'd like you to recognize is what makes them similar to one another. Now, they're obviously different because they have different heights and different widths and everything like that. But one thing that really stands out to me and I'd like you to recognize is these demarcations on the side here. Okay, so this top one here, that's going to be your demarcation for 250 milliliters. This top one right here is going to be 600 milliliters. This top one right here is 1000 milliliters. Okay, so essentially the point that I'd like you to appreciate about this is that the number of those lines. So if we look at the 600 mil beaker, we've got one, two, three, four lines that are um, parallel to the surface of the table. And then in the 1000 mil beaker, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so the question would be, or a reasonable question to ask is, are the spaces, so is from here to here, is that going to have the same volume as this distance or that range from there to there? Now, Obviously, they're going to be different because of the fact that the total volumes are going to be different. It's also an interesting observation to make whenever you see, okay, well, that beaker that holds 600 milliliters has only four markings, whereas the 1000 milliliter beaker has six markings. Now, four versus six isn't so significant, but it's important whenever you're working with a piece of glassware to say what that demarcation means. Now, this lowest one, Chances are what that is, is probably 200 milliliters or maybe 250 milliliters. Obviously that's going to be different than the volume at the bottom of this one at that 250 mil beaker. 
Um, anyway, that's kind of an aside, just important to recognize the differences and similarities between your glassware. Okay, so I've got those beakers. Now I've made my observations. I've, I've, I've looked at question or at step number five. Um, then what I wanna do is I want to click edit and clear my workbench. So my edit menu, clear my workbench, okay? Once it, my bench is cleared, go to the glassware and click on the graduated cylinders. I wanna see some of the similarities and differences between these pieces of glassware. 10, 25, 50 mil graduated cylinders, okay? Now on each of my pieces of glassware, right click or control click if you're using the Mac and go to detail view. So I'm gonna go to detail view here and that shows me a zoomed in version. Okay, click detail view of the 25 mil. That also gives me a zoom in. And then the 50 mil detail view. Okay, cool. So what this asks me to do is review these pieces of glassware and answer the questions on your canvas assignment. Okay. Now, what I'd like to point out to you is that these detail views, I uh, can't really, let's see, can I move it up and down? I can't really, okay, so let's see if I, okay. So this is the 25 mil grad cylinder, the 10 mil and the 50 mil grad cylinder. What do you notice that's different? What I notice that's different is, well, I've got, oh, let me get my annotate tool on my, maximum value for the 25 mil grad cylinder, that's gonna be 25 milliliters. Okay, so that's a, a kind of bolded line there. This is another bolded line, bolded line, bolded line, and bolded line, this is five. So I, it's reason I'll say this is 10, 15, 20, and there's my 25. Okay, so this is my five mil bolded line. This guy's gonna be 10 mils, okay? Now, what that means is that this line, this, this, and this are all going to be, let's see, that would probably be one mil increments because this would be six, seven, eight, nine, and that gets me to 10. Now, if I look at the one mil, or sorry, the 10 mil grad cylinder, I've got a, a, a bolded line for one, two, and I've got one, two, three, four. So that means that this guy is probably 1.2, sorry, that's a 0 0.2, 1.4, 1 1.6, 1 1.8. So these are 0 0.2 mil increments. These are one mil increments. And then these guys right here from 10 to 20, well, we've got lines of different lengths here. These are going to be one mil increments as well, okay? Now, what's worth noting about this is it's important to recognize how your graduated cylinder or whatever piece of glassware you're working with, those demarcations, because that's going to allow you and enable you to make a prediction as to a specific volume. So let's say that the solution volume landed here. That would be, I'm gonna say that's between 1.6 and 1.8, okay? It's pretty reasonable that I'd be able to say it's you know 1.65. And this is an, an actual lab setting when you're, you're right there next to the piece of glassware. Because you can say, well, I can see approximately halfway between 1.6 and 1.8, so that's 1.7, but then you can take it a step further. Now, making a prediction to the 100th position on a 10 mil graduated cylinder is pretty reasonable. That's a safe estimation that you can make. Now, to, let's say this guy right here, now, if you have a solution that falls between two lines on this, well, that's between 11 and 12 milliliters. So between 11 and 12 milliliters, can you reasonably say that it is 11 point, or a solution would be 11.25 milliliters? Not really. It's safe to say, 
well, 11.2 milliliters or 11.5 milliliters, but 11.25, that's far more precise than that piece of glassware enables you to make a reasonable expect, or estimation on. Okay. So again, a little aside there, I just wanted to talk about these pieces of glassware. Okay. So once we looked at our glassware, um, I'm going to clear my bench again. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my 10 mil grad cylinder three times. Okay. Drag each of the graduated cylinders. Okay, yeah, I needed to add one other thing. Um, I need to go to, back to my stock room, go to my tools and add three scales. Okay. Now drag each one of these. Okay. Now what's important to recognize about these three different pieces of glassware is that even in a simulation like what's presented here, the masses of these different pieces of glassware are different. This first one's 24.4573 grams, the next is 23.8107 grams, 24.9518 grams. Those differences are worth recognizing because although these pieces of glassware are designed and probably manufactured in the same, uh, same plant, it's entirely possible that when you're working in a lab, you are going to be using 10 mil grad cylinders that were not. And even if they were, they might not have the exact same mass. Maybe one has a small chip on the top of it or something, so a little piece of glass is missing. It's important to recognize that you need to determine the mass of each one, each of the pieces of glassware that you're using, and you cannot safely assume that they have the exact same mass. Okay. So now that we have dragged each one of our grad cylinders to the scales, we have one on each of the scales. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the stock room. We're going to go to um, glassware. We're going to go to other, and we're going to get a way boat. Okay, there's our way boat. Now, what I will do is I'm going to go to my stock room again. I'm going to go to solutions. And I'm gonna pick one of the metals. And I'll leave this to you to pick whichever one you want. I'm going to go with metal three. Okay, once the metal is on your workbench, click it and drag it over to the way boat. Once over your way boat, hold to pour. Okay. I'm going to drag it over there. And I'm going to click this hold to pour. Or I could actually type in the mass. So I'm going to, I'm going to transfer 15 grams of pour. Okay, I've transferred exactly 15.00 grams. So now that I've transferred, no, it doesn't look like there's any in there. Let me, 15. That means I probably have, uh, let's see, I remove that. Uh, glassware, other way boat. Fifteen or fifteen transferred. Okay, so there I have. I've got fifteen grams in my way boat. I am going to right click on my metal container, that metal free. I'm going to remove that from my bench. Now I'm going to tear all of my digital scales. That means click this button and what that does is whatever is on that scale, when you press tear, it basically removes that mass. So I'm gonna do that for each one of my balances. That doesn't seem to work. I've had that happen before. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna restart. Wait, that's okay. So tear, tear, tear. Okay, this has happened before. Yeah, so. I'm going to remove my, sorry, make it a scale, press tear. Okay, there we go. So in the event that you run into this problem where your, your scales don't work, well, don't add a Bunsen burner, just add a scale, add the scale again, I'm sorry. Put the grad cylinder on there, tear it, done. Okay, now I can go back, get my metal number three, 
get my way boat, 15 grams, transferred, close. Remove my metal, uh, remove, and then tear all my digital scales, done. Right click on my grad cylinder to adjust to detail view. Transfer a small amount of the metal to each of my 10 grad cylinders. Record the exact mass. Okay. I'm going to transfer all 15 grams. And now what I'm going to do, so I've transferred my mass. I'm going to go to my detail view of this. And this allows me to see approximately the volume that that mass occupies. So I transferred 15 grams of this metal. And I see that this occupies approximately uh, 15 grams is, I'm going to call that, we've got a 0.2 mil increment, that's 0 0.8, 0 0.6, I'm going to call that 0 0.65 grams. Okay, so now I have a mass and a volume that that mass occupies. So you'd have to do this a total of three times in order to come up with three different data points so that you can compare all of those. And whenever you have those, you have your three data points for your, your trial. So make sure that you answer all the questions. And once I do this calculation, which I've got a calculator around here somewhere, 15 divided by 0 0.65, 23 grams per milliliter. So my conclusion based on one data point, which is not nearly enough, is I'm closest to 21.45 grams per milliliter. So I wanna do this a total of two more times so that I can come up with three data points. So I can compare those and then kind of draw a conclusion. Yes, indeed, based on my data that I've collected, this is what I believe metal number three or metal number two or metal number one to be. All right, well, you'll be taking lots of pictures and post and embedding those as a part of your exercise. Um, so I believe that's everything. I hope this gets to the, the idea of density and showing that in a mass does indeed occupy space and volume. All right, well, have a great afternoon or evening or whenever, bye.